Madison, who gets things done. Except when she announces that she is a proud mother, and then I guess she's not a progressive. I am excited about really getting into the debate with Senator Sanders. It is great to be against the war after you vote for the war. He has voted with the gun lobby. Enough is enough. So I hope we keep it on the issues. We were told that my opponent was the inevitable nominee. She doesn't appear quite so inevitable today. There is so much at stake in this election. So are you guys ready for a radical idea? The Democratic Candidates Debate, live from the University of New Hampshire. Here now, Rachel Maddow and Chuck Todd. NBC Democratic candidates debate. We are super excited to be here at the University of New Hampshire tonight. This is the first time that Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders have squared off exactly like this. Face to face, just one on one, just the two of them. And neither party has seen this yet. These candidates are both running for the Democratic nomination, but they are very different from each other when it comes to what matters most and how they would go about the job of being president. Our job tonight is to draw out those differences so you the voters can understand them and be fully informed. And we do hope that the candidates will take this opportunity to show us the distinctions, show us the differences between them. That's the whole reason that we're here tonight. We're not here for talking points. We're to learn about the difference between the candidates. And with that, let's get going. Please join us in welcoming Secretary Hillary Clinton and Senator Bernie Sanders. to the New Hampshire Union leader for helping make this debate possible, and their readers who helped provide some of the questions and topics that we'll be addressing tonight. The rules tonight, by the way, are simple. 90 seconds for answers, 30 seconds for follow-ups and rebuttals. And with that, that's it. We're going to begin um, with 60-second opening statements from each of the candidates. And as agreed to in advance by the two campaigns, we are going to begin tonight with Senator Sanders. Well, Rachel, thank you very much. <clears throat> Millions of Americans are giving up on the political process. And they're giving up on the political process because they understand the economy is rigged. They are working longer hours for low wages. They're worried about the future of their kids. And yet, almost all new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. Not what America is supposed to be about. Not the fairness that we grew up believing that America was about. And then sustaining that rigged economy is a corrupt campaign finance system undermining American democracy, where billionaires, Wall Street, corporate America, can contribute unlimited sums of money into super PACs and into candidates. Our job together is to end a rigged economy, create an economy that works for all, and absolutely overturn Citizens United, one person, one vote. That's what American democracy is about. Thank you, Senator. Secretary Clinton. Well, I'm happy to be here in New Hampshire for this debate as we move toward the primary on Tuesday. I believe that America has the opportunity to once again live by our values, live up to our values in the 21st century. But I think that America can only do that if Americans can succeed. 
And there are lots of reasons why Americans today are feeling left out and left behind. Yes, of course, the economy has not been working for most Americans. Yes, of course, we have special interests that are unfortunately doing too much to rig the game. But there's also the continuing challenges of racism, of sexism, of discrimination against the LGBT community, of the way that we treat people as opposed to how we want to be treated. I believe that we can get back on the right track, that I want to imagine a country where people's wages reflect their hard work, where we have health care for everyone and where every child gets to live up to his or her potential. I'm fighting for people who cannot wait for those changes, and I'm not making promises that I cannot keep. All right. Well, let's get started. Secretary Clinton, last night you cited the Concord Monitor when you said of Senator Sanders that, quote, it's very hard to see how any of his proposals could ever be achievable. So please tell us why uh, you think if he's elected president on a platform of promising things like free public college and universal health care that he cannot achieve those things. Well, let me start by saying that Senator Sanders and I share some very big progressive goals. I've been fighting for universal health care for many years, and we're now on the path to achieving it. I don't want us to start over again. I think that would be a great mistake to once again plunge our country into a contentious debate about whether we should have and what kind of system we should have for health care. I want to build on the progress we've made, go from 90 percent coverage to 100 percent coverage. And I don't want to rip away the security that people finally have. 18 million people now have health care. Pre-existing conditions are no longer a bar. So we have a difference. I also believe in affordable college, but I don't believe in free college because every expert that I have talked to says, look, how will you ever control the cost? What I want to do is make sure middle class kids, not Donald Trump's kids, get to be able to afford college. I want to get the economy going again. It's not just enough about what we're against, as important as that is. I have a plan to create new jobs, manufacturing, infrastructure, clean energy jobs that will make us the 21st century clean energy superpower. I also want to make sure small businesses can start and grow again. And of course, I believe in raising the minimum wage and equal pay for work. But the numbers just don't add up from what Senator Sanders has been proposing. That's why all of the independent experts, all of the editorial boards that have vetted both of us have concluded that it is just not achievable. Let's go down a path where we can actually tell people what we will do. A progressive is someone who makes progress. That's what I intend to do. Thank you, Secretary. Senator Sanders, so just explain how you've spent nearly two decades in Congress and haven't gotten any of these things passed. Why do you think as president well, you'll be able to achieve big, big new programs? Well, like I haven't this? quite run for president before. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's deal with some of the comments that Secretary Clinton made. And by the way, sec you know, sometimes there's a lot of drama here. I've known Secretary Clinton for 25 years and respect her very much. Here is the issue. Every major country on earth, whether it's the UK, whether it's France, whether it's Canada, has managed to provide health care to all people as a right, and they are spending significantly less per capita on health care than we are. So I do not accept the belief that the United States of America can't do that. I do not accept the belief that the United States of America and our government can't stand up to the ripoffs of the pharmaceutical industry, which charge us by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Number two, in the economy today, everybody understands that we need a well-educated workforce. This is 2016. When we talk about public education, it can no longer be K through 12th grade. I do believe that public colleges and universities should be tuition free. Well, how do we pay for that? It's an expensive proposition. I do believe that we substantially lower student debt in this country, which is crushing millions of people. We pay for it, in my view, by a tax on Wall Street speculation. The middle class bailed out Wall Street in their time of need. Now it is Wall Street's time to help the middle class. If I could just follow up on that.
There is no disagreement between us on universal coverage for health care. The disagreement is where do we start from and where do we end up? The Republicans want to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I want to improve it. I want to build on it, get the cost down, get prescription drug costs down. Senator Sanders wants us to start all over again. This was a major achievement of President Obama, of our country. It is helping people right now. I am not going to wait and have this plunge back into a contentious national debate that has very little chance of succeeding. Okay. Let's make the Affordable Care Act work for everybody. This is a good a discussion here. Yes, and, and let me just say this, as Secretary Clinton may know, I am on the Health Education Labor Committee. That committee wrote the Affordable Care Act. The idea that I would dismantle health care in America while we're waiting to pass a Medicare for all is just not accurate. The Affordable Care Act has clearly, as Secretary Clinton made, made the point, done a lot of good things. But what it has not done is dealt with the fact that we have 29 million people today who have zero health insurance. We have even more who are underinsured with large deductibles and co-payments, and it's, this prescription drug prices are off the wall. So I do believe that in the future, not by dismantling what we have here, I help write that bill. But by moving forward, rallying the American people, right. I do believe we should have health care for all. All right. Thank you both. Rachel. Secretary Clinton. Senator Sanders is campaigning against you um, now, at this point in the campaign, basically by arguing that you are not progressive enough to be the Democratic nominee. He has said that if you voted for the Iraq war, if you are in favor of the death penalty, if you wobbled on things like the Keystone Pipeline or TPP, if you said single-payer health care could never happen, then you're too far to the right of the Democratic Party to be the party's standard bearer. Given those policy positions, why should liberal Democrats support you and not Senator Sanders? Well, because I have a progressive who gets things done. And the root of uh, that word, progressive, is progress. But I've, I've heard uh, Senator Sanders' comments, and it's really caused me to wonder, who's left in the progressive wing of the Democratic Party? Under his definition, President Obama's not progressive because he took donations from Wall Street. Vice President Biden is not progressive because he supported Keystone. Senator Shaheen is not progressive because she supports the trade pact. Even the late great Senator Paul Wellstone would not fit this definition because he voted for DOMA. You know, we have differences and honestly, I think we should be talking about what we want to do for the country. But if we're going to get into labels, I don't think it was particularly progressive to vote against the Brady Bill five times. I don't think it was progressive to vote to give gun makers and sellers immunity. I don't think it was progressive to vote against Ted Kennedy's immigration reform. So we can go back and forth like this. But the fact is, most people watching tonight want to know what we've done and what we will do. That's why I am laying out a specific agenda agenda that will make progress, get more jobs with rising incomes, get us to universal health care coverage, get us to universal pre-K, paid family leave, and the other elements of what I think will build a strong economy that will ensure that Americans keep making progress. That's what I'm offering and that's what I will do as president. Senator Sanders. How do you establish a list of what it means to be a progressive that is unrealistic? No, not at all. Here's the reality of American economic life today. The reality is that we have one of the lowest voting turnouts of any major country on earth because so many people have given up on the political process. The reality is that there has been trillions of dollars of wealth going from the middle class in the last 30 years to the top one-tenth of one percent. The reality is that we have a corrupt campaign finance system which separates the American people's needs and desires from what Congress is doing. So to my mind, what we have got to do is wage a political revolution where millions of people who have given up on the political process stand up and fight back. The 
demand a government that represents us and not just a handful of campaign contributions, contributors. Now, all of the ideas that I'm talking about, they are not radical ideas. Doing, making public colleges and universities tuition free. That exists in countries all over the world, used to exist in the United States. Rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure and creating 13 million jobs by doing away with tax loopholes that large corporations now enjoy by putting their money into the Cayman Islands and other tax havens, that is not a radical idea. What we need to do is to stand up to the big money interests and the campaign contributors. When we do that, we can, in fact, transform America. Thank you, Senator. I just want to follow up on, on, on a comment that Secretary Clinton said, Senator. You know, President Obama has not called for abolishing the death penalty. President Obama is for the big Asian trade deal known as TPP. And just yesterday you said you can't be both a moderate or a progressive, but you, you can't be both. Is President Obama, in your judgment, based on these policy positions, a progressive? Let me just pick up on this point. This whole discussion began because I commented not make an overall evaluation about the secretary. She was in Ohio, I think, in September or November. And she got up and said something like, I have been, I'm paraphrasing, I have been criticized because people think I'm a moderate. Well, I am a moderate. That's where this came from. It wasn't me paraphrasing her. It is what she said. And all that I said is nothing wrong with being a moderate. But you can't be a moderate. You can't be a progressive. In terms of, of President Obama, I think if we remember where this country was seven years ago, 800,000 jobs being lost every month. $1.4 trillion deficit, the world's financial system on the verge of collapse. I think that President Obama, Vice President Biden, and the Democratic leadership in the House and the Senate have done a fantastic job. We are in much better shape today than we were seven years ago, although my Republican colleagues seem to have forgotten where we were seven years ago. That's the fact. But we still have a very long way to go. Do I think President Obama is a progressive? Yeah, I do. I disagree with him on a number of issues, including the trade agreement. But yes, I think he has done an excellent job. Well, Chuck, Clinton, if I ahead. could, yeah. you know, in the very first debate, uh, I was asked, am I a moderate or a progressive? And I said, I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. And cherry picking a quote here or there doesn't change my record of having fought for racial justice having fought for kids' rights, having fought against the kind of inequities that fueled my interest in service in the first place, going back to my days in the Children's Defense Fund. It certainly didn't stop me from taking on the drug companies and the insurance companies before it was called Hillary Care. It was called, oh, I mean, before it was called Obamacare, it was called Hillary Care because we took them on and we weren't successful, but we kept fighting and we got the Children's Health Insurance Program. And every step along the way, I have stood up and and fought and have the scars to prove it. So again, I think it's important that, look, I understand Senator Sanders is really trying to distinguish himself. I, I understand that. That's what you do in campaigns. Uh, but at the same time, let's not be in, in I think, an unfair way uh, making a, an accusation or making an attack about where I stand and where I've always stood. And it is fair to say, Senator, that in your definition, as you being the self-proclaimed gatekeeper for progressivism, I don't know anyone else who fits that definition. But I know a lot of really hard-fighting progressives in the Democratic Party who have stood up time and time again against special interests, against the powerful, on behalf of those who are left behind and left out. And that's what we ought to be celebrating. Let's talk about what we would do as president and commander in chief to that's make right. sure the progress continues into the future. Yeah. Thirty seconds, then we'll move. We'll move on. That's right. I mean, instead of arguing about definitions, let's well, you, talk about, you began it let's yesterday talk about with your what comments. we should do. And one of the things we should do is not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. I am very proud to be the only candidate up here who does not have a super PAC, who is not raising huge sums of money from Wall Street or special interests. I am enormously proud.
never believed it would happen, that we have raised three and a half million individual contributions, averaging $27 a piece. That is what the political revolution means. Thank you. Rachel. Senator Sanders, as a Vermonter, uh, you have almost a home state advantage here in New Hampshire. Uh, but back home across the border, y you also have a long history of running against Democrats as a third party candidate for, for governor, for Senate, for Congress. In, in 1988, your candidacy as a, as a third party candidate arguably cost the Democrats a congressional seat and sent a Republican instead. How can you lead the Democratic Party nationally when you have not been a member of the Democratic Party until very recently? Well, Rachel, actually, that wasn't accurate. In 1988, the Republican did win, I believe, by three points. I came in second. It was 34, 31, I think 19 for the Democrat. In that race, the Democrat was the spoiler, not me. And it is true. <laughs> It is true. It's not, not to be denied. I am the longest serving independent in the history of the United States Congress. People of Vermont sent me to Washington as an independent. That is true. But on the other hand, I have, when I was in the House for 16 years, I caucused with the Democrats. In the Senate for nine years, caucused with the Democrats, of course. And I was elected by the Democrats to be chair of the Veterans Committee uh, two, a couple, three years ago which I'm very proud of, and now am the ranking member on the Budget Committee, leader of the Democrats in opposition to the majority Republicans. I am running for president as a Democrat, and if elected, not only do I hope to bring forth a major change in national priorities, but let me be frank, I do want to see major changes in the Democratic Party. I want to see working people and young people come into the party in a way that doesn't exist now. And you know what? I want a 50-state strategy so the Democratic Party is not just the party of 25 states. Secretary Clinton. Secretary Clinton, you know, the person who first uh, put out the idea of a 50-state uh, party strategy is former Governor Howard Dean, right. who's with us tonight. And right. I am... Uh, I'm very proud and grateful to have the support of so many elected Vermonters and former officials. Three, two former governors, the current governor, the current other senator. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I think it's because they've worked with me. They've seen what I do. They know what a kind of a colleague I am. They want me as their partner in the White House. And that's exactly what I will do. We'll get things done together. Democrats, Republicans, independents, we're we're going to make progress together when I'm president. Senator Sanders, to this, to this point, Secretary Clinton is, is raising the issue of endorsements by your home state Democrats. Um, is, she's, she's implying that that's, that says something about the people who know you best. Well, I don't see it quite like that. Uh, I am. How do you see it? I am will absolutely admit that Secretary Clinton has the support of far more governors, mayors, members of the House. She has the entire establishment, or almost the entire establishment, behind them. That's a fact. I don't deny it. But I am pretty proud that we have over a million people who have contributed to our campaign, averaging 27 bucks a piece, that we have had meetings where 25, 30,000 people have come out, that our campaign is a campaign of the people, by the people, and for the people. So, Rachel, yes, Secretary Clinton does represent the establishment. I represent, I hope, ordinary Americans, and by the way, who are not all that enamored with the establishment, but I am very proud to have people like Keith Ellison and Raul Grijalva in the House, the co-chairman of the House Progressive Caucus. Well, look, I've got to just jump in here because, honestly, Senator Sanders is the only person who I think would characterize me, uh, a woman running to be the first woman president, as exemplifying the establishment. And I've got to tell you that it is, it, 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 it is really quite, uh, it's really quite amusing to me. 
people support me because they know me, they know my life's work, they have worked with me, and many have also worked with Senator Sanders. And at the end of the day, they endorse me because they know I can get things done. I am not going to make promises I can't keep. I am not going to talk about big ideas like single payer and then not level with people about how much it will cost. A respected health economist said that these plans would cost a trillion dollars more a year. I'm not going to tell people that I will raise your incomes and not your taxes and not mean it because I don't want to see the kind of struggle that the middle class is going through exemplified by these promises that would raise taxes and make it much more difficult for many, many Americans to get ahead and stay ahead. That is not my agenda. Senator Sanders, you have 30 seconds to respond to that. What being part of the establishment is, is in the last quarter having a super PAC that raised $15 million from Wall Street that throughout one's life raised a whole lot of money from the drug companies and other special interests. To my mind, if we do not get a handle on money in politics and the degree to which big money controls the political process in this country, nobody is going to bring about the changes that is needed in this country for the middle class and working families. Yeah, but I, I think it's, it's fair to really ask what's behind that comment. You know, Senator Sanders has said he wants to run a positive campaign. I've tried to keep uh, my disagreements over issues, as it should be. But time and time again, by innuendo, by insinuation, there is this attack that he is putting forth, which really comes down to, you know, Anybody who ever took donations or speaking fees from any interest group uh, has to be bought. And I just absolutely reject that, Senator. And I really don't think these kinds of attacks by insinuation are worthy of you. And enough is enough. If you've got something to say, say it directly. But you will not find that I ever changed a view or a vote because of any donation that I ever received. What? And I have stood up and I have represented my constituents to the best of my ability, and I'm very proud of that. You know, so I think it's time to end the very artful smear that you and your campaign oh, have been carrying on. out in recent weeks. And let's talk, let's talk about the issues. Let's talk that divide us, okay, let's and talk, let's, let let's, us talk we about both issues. agree with campaign finance reform. Let's talk I, about issues. I worked hard for McCain-Feingold. I want to reverse Citizens let's, United. Let's, let's talk, about issues. Let's let's talk, talk about, about issues. Let's talk about issues. All right, let's talk about why in the 1990s Wall Street got deregulated. Did it have anything to do with the fact that Wall Street provided, spent billions of dollars on lobbying and campaign contributions? Well, some people might think, yeah, that had some influence. Let's ask why it is that we pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs and your medicine can be doubled tomorrow and there's nothing that the government can do to stop it. You think it has anything to do with the huge amounts of campaign contributions and lobbying from the fossil fuel industry? Let's talk about climate change. Do you think there is a reason why not one Republican has the guts to recognize that climate change is real and that we need to transform our energy system? Do you think it has anything to do with the Koch brothers and ExxonMobil pouring huge amounts of money into the political system? That is what goes on in America. I am not. I like... You know, there is a reason why these people are putting huge amounts of money into our political system. And in my view, it is undermining American democracy, and it is allowing Congress to represent wealthy campaign contributors and not the working families of this country. Well, you know, Senator, I don't think... I, I, I don't think...
We're gonna... I don't think you can find any person in political life today who has been subjected to more attacks and had more money spent against her by special interests, among whom you have named a few, than I. And I'm proud of that. You know, when I took on the drug companies and the insurance companies for universal health care coverage, they went after me with a vengeance. Today, you've got hedge fund billionaires aligned with Karl Rove running ads against me to try to get Democrats to vote for you. I know this game. I'm going to stop this game. But while we're talking about votes, you're the one who voted to deregulate swaps and derivatives in 2000, which contributed to the over-leveraging of Lehman Brothers, which was one of the culprits that brought down the economy. So I don't know. I don't, I'm not impugning your motive because you voted to deregulate swaps and derivatives. People make mistakes. And I'm no. certainly not saying you right. did it for any right. kind of financial advantage. What, what we've got you to do as like Democrats, what we've got to do as Democrats is to be united to actually solve these problems and what I believe is that I have a better track record and a better opportunity to actually get that job done. That's well, what this election should be about. Go, go ahead, 30, 30 seconds and then we're going to move on. I think as Secretary Clinton knows, there is nobody who fought hard. I, I was on the House Financial Committee at that time. I heard the arguments coming from Democrats and Republicans, Robert Rubin, Alan Greenspan, about how great an idea it would be if we did away with Glass-Steagall and if we allowed investor banks and commercial banks and big insurance companies to merge. Go to YouTube today. Look up Greenspan Sanders. Listen to what I told them then. I helped lead the effort against deregulation. Unfortunately, we lost that. The result is, was the worst financial disaster since the Great Depression. Thank you both. Senator Sanders, Secretary Clinton, <laughs> obviously we've touched a nerve. We're going to be back with more on this subject and much more right after this. Stay with us. Okay.